It's time for some Rolly boys as we paint the Droidikas from Star Wars Legion. Hello there and welcome to Zorba Zorb Gaming. My name's Lock and Linton Keen and today we're going to be diving into all things Rolly and Shieldy and Super Blasty, the Droidikas from the CIS forces from Star Wars Legion. These are some absolutely awesome units. We all love the Droidikas ever since the Phantom Menace with the... <laughs> They're awesome, they're super cool, uh, and they're really cool in game as well. They, they have like this deployed mode where they're ready to blast and shield and, and then they can, you know, kind of speed up and roll along the ground as well. And you even get different models to represent their different game states, so they're super cool models. Uh, and one thing I really love about the Droidica kit that has just come out as a part of the new wave of Star Wars Legion releases is that it is a kit for two Droidicas, and in it you get two Droidicas standing and two Droidicas rolling, so effectively four models to represent both of those game states. I think it's super cool that you don't have to like, you know, buy extra kits to make the rolly and the standing, so that is a huge win for me, and they've got a really great aesthetic as well with all the grimy underbelly of those mechanical components that actuate all of their crazy movement set against the dull luster of that red carapace. Uh, so yeah, a really, really great scheme, and we're going to do a really cool painting tutorial for them today. We're we're going to be using some more Games Workshop contrast paints, which seem to be working amazingly for the droid forces, but we're going to be doing something a little bit different and applying them over some metallic base coats. And that's a really great technique we can use to create a really cool looking scheme for some, you know, metallic armor. Uh, and then we'll do a few other little bits and pieces uh, that are quite clever and fun as well. So without further ado, let's jump on over to the painting desk and prepare some droidikas to roll on into battle and annihilate the clones. So the primer I've used today is the standard flat grey surface primer from Tamiya. It's a really great primer that gives a nice smooth finish and it's a really fantastic base to work from. Make sure you use a spraying stick so that you can get up underneath all the various Droidica armature pieces and make sure everything is covered in paint in all those nooks and crannies. Our first base coat to go down today is going to be Lead Belcher by Citadel Games Workshop, a wonderful silver metallic. And we're actually going to apply this all over the model. Now I'm doing this by hand but you could of course also use the Lead Belcher spray primer that the Games Workshop have. I would still use the Tamiya primer first to give you a really nice bonded prime uh, because sometimes the metallic spray primers, because obviously they've got those metallic flakes through the primer, they don't quite have the adhesion that a proper surface primer does. So still put your primer down first and then use the spray Lead Belcher, but I'm not going to pay 30 bucks for a can that I'm basically going to use pretty rarely, so I'm just going to do it by hand. The key here is to make sure you get a really nice smooth coverage that doesn't leave any obvious brush strokes. Now luckily Lead Belcher is quite a nice paint. It's, it's, it's got lots of metallic flakes through it, but it's still really thick and really smooth. You just got to make sure you don't put it on too thickly. It's, it's about that balance between a thin coat that doesn't obscure the detail, but not leaving any brush strokes. Now once that has completely dried, we're going to dive into starting the red carapace, or the armoured components of the Droidica. And we're going to be using the Citadel Contrast Flesh Terrors Red. Now these contrast paints, I'll put up a little diagram here. You can have a look at the different types of effects you get by putting them over different base coats. Obviously there's the intended coats, you've got Gracier and Wraithbone, which are the two contrast primers. But they also work really well over metallics, particularly metallics that are quite lightly coloured. And obviously with a nice silver sheen, we're going to get a bit of that dull luster of the metallic component come through the contrast transparency of the Flesh Terror's Red. Now Flesh Terror's Red, when you put it down neat like this, it is still quite dark. Often I like to blend in a bit of medium when I want a nice vibrant red, but I'm going to keep it quite dark today, and you're not going to get a lot of the silver coming through, but it's just enough to give it that nice kind of metallic sparkle underneath the red, and it gives you this really lovely red irony kind of tone all over the armoured carapace. As always with your contrast paints, you just want to make sure that you're wicking away any extra pigment to make sure you don't get too much over pooling in those recessed areas and just managing the nice spread of pigment till you've got a really nice colour ratio and you're maintaining all of the detail of the model. The areas that we're targeting are the big curved carapace on the back, there's a couple of bits on those shoulder pads, uh, there's those two back visors and then the kind of main armoured section underneath that big ball joint that all the legs connect to and everything else is going to stay untouched. Now our next layer is going to be 
be treating all of that silver with the first coat and we're putting down some null oil of course we all know lead belcher and null oil is an absolute dream combination and I am just going to pile this on everywhere that's silver which is basically everywhere that isn't red at this point I am going to lather on a really nice coat of null oil there's a lot of recess detail here and I'm putting this on neat I'm not thinning it down or using a glaze this is neat null oil really thickly to make sure that we capture all of that beautiful detail of all the various armatures and servos and mechanical components that actuate this droid's wonderful movement. Now it's really important that we let both of those layers dry before we dive into the next sort of phase of the paint job which is our dry brushing. We've got the colour work there, we've got all the toning in our layers but we want to really bring these layers to life. So the first thing I'm going to do is grab the Citadel Layer Paint Brass Scorpion. Now this is a really fantastic paint and it's quite underutilised. Uh, it's got a really nice sort of rusty red almost bronzy kind of vibe to it and it is a gorgeous dry brush over red metallic armour to really bring it up and give it that kind of lovely pop uh, that's a nice kind of crisp highlight that also has that lovely metallic sheen because it's got a metallic flake through it as well. So I'm kind of dry brushing this pretty heavily. I'm, I'm hitting all of the ray surfaces but also toning the flat surfaces a little bit as well. But uh, you know because of the kind of dry brush nature and the vibrancy of that red contrasting with the metallic kind of browny goldy bronze of the Brass Scorpion, uh, it works really well and the colours really complement each other. You build up quite a nice colour profile. So dry brush that all over our red components and try and keep it off the silver. So up next I'm going to be grabbing some Stormhost Silver or Mithril Silver in the old Citadel language and doing a nice dry brush all over our steel or metal components to give a nice top highlight kick to our kind of grimy underbelly. Now the Lead Belcher is quite a sort of darker metal as it is already and then once you null noil it down it really takes the kind of luster out of it. So we're kind of bringing up all of those top highlights, kicking quite strongly across the top edges of all of these raised components to really accent all of the detail that we've got in these parts. If this starts to get a little bit too bright, we can always wash it back with null oil, but if you've got a fair bit of brush control and don't go too crazy, you usually don't have to. There is one little extra step I want to take, just to really kind of give this model a little bit of extra detail. Now when we think about this sort of mechanical construction of the droid, there's going to be a lot of oil and a lot of lubricant and kind of engine fluid and all that sort of stuff leaking out of all the servos and, you know, particularly in the dusty environment of Geonosis, lubrication is key for any mechanical components. So what we're going to do is grab some typhus corrosion and quite sort of liberally hit that in all of the joints, anywhere that actuated components would require some lubricant. You can really allow it to sort of flow and drip down onto regions under underneath like on the knee joints I'm flowing it right down on the legs like that fluid is leaking and don't be too alarmed if it's quite a stark contrast between the typhus corrosion and your metallic paint we're going to come back and blend that in a second the great thing about the typhus corrosion is that it's got a lot of grit in it it's got a really nice oily texture and as it dries it kind of separates and does this beautiful effect uh, that just looks fantastic for kind of weathered engine parts and seized and kind of oily all sorts of gross mechanical bits so it's really good I like to kind of jam it in all around that center kind of uh, structural armature region as well because there's a lot of kind of moving parts in there and then really focus on all those ball joints that you know every elbow knee ankle wrist all those joints get a lot of gross fluid in there and while it's still wet up next we're going to come in with a little bit of Agrax Earthshade and I love doing this combination of putting down some typhus corrosion and then blending out the edges of those typhus regions with some Agrax Earthshade. So I've got myself a smaller brush so I don't accidentally overload the entire region I'm painting with additional brown shade and lose all of my silver sheen. We just want to be hitting the areas of silver that are blending into the typhus corrosion and this is essentially what we're doing here is wet working again right just like what we did with the clone troopers this allows us to kind of move the typhus corrosion around and change the saturation of that pigment by blending it in with the Agrax Earthshade wash. We can really graduate the tone of the gross oily bits but you can also leave some stark as well like there's a big pool sitting in one spot so there's lots of exciting things that you can do with some Typhus Corrosion and Agrax Earthshade to really add a little bit of mechanical interest. Up next is of course our base. We're going to dive into getting our beautiful Geonosian scheme and the first thing we want to do and it's really important for this base in particular is get a really nice solid coat of our brown. I'm using charred brown from the Vallejo Game Color range all over our base and really make sure that there is a good coverage in those kind of quarter line joins that we can see 
there, but we don't apply that paint too thickly because we really want to keep the variation of those channels that are part of the aiming sort of sights of the base uh, because those are going to be very important later. Once that's fully dry, I've got some of my Luke's APS basing glue, and this is quite an important step this time. What I'm going to do here is apply the glue to the four quadrants, but not let any glue get into those channels. I'm sort of very carefully teasing the glue out with a little, uh, that's like a skewer there that I've kind of shaved the edges off to give myself a flat surface with a bit more of an edge and pointer control. And you can see I'm slowly working that glue right up to the edge without allowing it to go in the channel. And that's going to help us preserve those kind of channels or those lines when we base it with our Mars Earth basing material. And that way, we'll have some beautiful basing but still be capturing the fundamental game mechanics of this base. So once you've got a, quite a nice coat of glue down, you still want it to be thick so that it captures and bonds to all the basing ready stuff, but you don't want it to kind of be so thick that it just runs over the edges uh, or runs into those channels. So once you've got a nice thick coat, we're going to dip that down into our Mars Earth base ready material, which you can get over at ZorbaZorb.com. Uh, we want to, you know, a quite a nice coating all of that, just shape it all about and make sure that you get a few rocks as well not just completely flat sand there's a lovely mix of different sort of size profile rocks and kind of sands in this mix it's a fantastic mix I just love it make sure you give it a good tap shake it all off and then leave that to dry it is a fast drying glue but just to make sure it's really well bonded because I'm coming back and dry brushing over it I like to leave it for a good couple of hours now of course as I've been painting our normal guy I've also been painting our rolled version and you'll notice that I've got a couple of little extra bits of glue all over the top of his carapace because of course he's rolling so he'll be flicking up mud and covered with that everywhere so I've just kind of put a little bit across the top and on his various joints sort of anywhere that would have been in contact with the ground and then I can dip him in and do a little bit of a sprinkle action to make sure I get some nice coverage of Mars Earth basing material all over his roly-poly components. Now that our base is fully dry, I just like to brush off all of the loose excess material because often there's a lot sitting on there that won't come off from like, you know, a bit of a whack. So I've got a brush that I kind of dedicate to this. It's an old dry brushing brush and its job is now brushing off Mars Earth base ready because uh, once that brush is kind of polluted, you'll never get rid of that pigment. And now what we're going to do is bring in some plague brown to put in a bit of a mid-tone and start to bring in those really nice sandy geonosis tones. So I'm just going to sort of quite lightly dry brush across the top, just sort of uh, filling in all of those mid-tone profiles. We've got that lovely red ochre there from the Mars Earth, but this just gives us a little bit more of that Geonosian sand kind of vibe. There's quite a, an orangey yellow tone to that whole landscape uh, and this begins to put the mid-tones in for that region. Make sure that you hit all of the kind of top areas that are also attached to our roly-poly droidica because uh, we want those to match the base as well. While we've got the plague brown out, we also want to hit the sides of this base with a nice dry brush just to kind of blend that nice brown in with the Geonosian landscape. Now once you've done all of that beautiful Beautiful orange. We're going to come in with some bone white or bleach bone or ushabti bone, depending on uh, which kind of painting profile you're most partial to and we're going to do a really light dry brush all the way across the top of that yellow. We're just adding the top highlight here, the kick of the beautiful sun beaming down on the Geonosian plains. So that is our first droidica looking absolutely fantastic, but there's still a little bit of work to do on our roly-poly droidica because, of course, he's got no arms, mate. So uh, he's armless. We need to uh, glue on our arm components. Now, you'll notice that I've built both of the arms separately but not glued them on just so that I could get easy access into all of those components because when he's rolled up in a ball, it's quite painful. Uh, so I do like to paint this component in a sub-assembly and then we just put a little bit of glue on each of his joints and slide them in. They've got a little square hole that they match in. Now this isn't the most amazing join ever, so you want to get a reasonable amount of glue on there uh, and then uh, and then it should hold quite strongly. Now I've noticed here that as I've kind of painted these components separately, that the silver on my arms, now that I've kind of flipped them over and reoriented them to be glued in, is a little bit too light. So I'm just coming in with a little bit more null oil just to blend those back. And the great thing about null oil is you can just do this at any time. Uh, it, it's perfect at putting in those shadows and you can add it in the middle or at the end of a painting process and it's still looks fantastic. So I've just gone a little too heavily with my Stormhost Silver and I'm going to blend that back. The other thing of course is that now these arms are glued on I've noticed that these would probably be covered with uh, Geonosian dirt as well so I'm just coming in here by uh, putting a little bit of my uh, glue on a stick so that I don't accidentally squirt glue all over the model by applying it directly from the bottle and I'm just going to hit all of the kind of outer raised areas. You can see a bubble just popped there which would have gone all over the model if I wasn't going on the stick and I'm just hitting all of those 
those raised regions to make sure that we get some nice glue. But what I'm also going to do is drop a little bit of this glue directly on the join between the arms and the main Droidica armature. What that's going to do is when I'm sprinkling on my Mars Earth, a little bit of Mars Earth is also going to get caught in that join, as if it's sort of been flicked up there as he's spinning, but it's also going to lock in place with a little bit more physical bonding just to fill out that join and make it a little bit stronger. It's just a little clever trick you can do, which still looks completely fine with the model. There will be dirt flying up there, but it just helps improve the structural integrity of that join without putting any kind of green stuff or additional pinning or additional filler in there. And now I know those arms aren't going to come flying off. As always, we want to kind of paint that uh, same uh, Geonosian Earth up to match with the same two colors, and then your Roly Poly Droidica will be ready to go. I absolutely love these droidicas. I'm so happy with how they've turned out. I really love the Geonosian Earth all over the rolled up one. In fact, now I'm seeing them both side by side, I think I'll come back and put a little bit of uh, Earth sort of sprayed up on my standing droidica as well because he's probably been in ball mode to roll on over to battle because I just love the way that kind of powder looks uh, set against the beautiful ready silver of the paint scheme. So there we have it guys, our droidicas are finished, and don't they just look awesome? I really love the way they've come out, and I really love how they play in game as well. I think FFG have done an awesome job of capturing the true spirit of the Roly Boys. I love that we get the two models and everything, it's it's just going to be really cool. I can't wait to see, you know, my opponent's faces every time you swap out the kind of rolled up one, and off he flies along the battlefield. It's going to be really cool, and I love the way those models work, and I think they paint up an absolute treat. So if you guys enjoyed that video, let me know down in the comments below, and if there's any other Star Wars Legion units you guys would like me to jump onto next with my painting tutorial series, definitely let me know down in the comments below. Make sure you check out all the other Star Wars Legion we've got here on the channel. We've got uh, painting tutorials and assembly tutorials for all of the Clone Wars units, or at least almost all of them at this point. Uh, we're going to be leaning into some pretty cool narrative battle reports on the horizon as well, so make sure you check all that stuff out. Subscribe if you're new around here, and thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time here on Zorbazorb Gaming. Cheers, guys.